Thank you all for coming here and thank you for your patience as we were getting everyone assembled. Uh, so yesterday we took a action to stem the rapid increase in violence during the past several days, especially the uptick in non-fatal shootings. Uh, the police has, have deployed an additional 150 officers and that additional deployment will stay in place uh, each day until at least uh, Friday evening. Uh, the police has also requested and received additional resources from the sheriff's office, MTA, state police, and school police uh, for additional patrol uh, resources. All available sworn personnel not currently assigned to the field will be assigned to the field to field operations for deployment areas where crime has speak, uh, spiked excuse me, in uh, recent days. Additionally, uh, clandestine measures have been put in place as well. We'll continue to arrest and prosecute those responsible uh, for criminal activity. You know, we hate to see any of it, uh, but when we're seeing it, we, we're also following up um, recently with an increase in identifying uh, swiftly uh, suspects and, and apprehending, and we want that to continue, and that will depend on uh, developing and maintaining uh, stronger relationships with uh, the community. Uh, again, we'll continue to arrest and prosecute those behind the violence. Um, you know, it is again, all in partnership, but we are, uh, we are not uh, giving up. Uh, we are very focused on uh, not the, I mean, yes, the spike, but also overall uh, crime. We've gotten some, um, we've got the, the non-fatal shooting, but we also have some of the street robberies that we apprehended some uh, juveniles uh, last week that were responsible for those. And we are, um, you know, equally uh, focused on the those issues when we have the street incidents and robberies as we are on the non-fatal shootings. We're also focusing on uh, repeat violent offenders. If you want more specifics on that, we can. Um, that's why we have the members of uh, the uh, police department. I also want to thank the members of the the uh, fire department, the, the fire. Uh, Officers, uh, President Mike Campbell and the Firefighters Union, uh, Rick Hoffman. I want to thank them both for being here. I don't know if I saw it. Deb yes, Deborah Moore Carter. I don't know how I could miss you in the beautiful blue. Uh, I want to thank uh, the Labor Commissioner for being here. I also want to thank the Acting Chief of the Fire Department, Siegel, uh, for being here. Um, you know, all of the work that we're doing uh, in this contract, which is a landmark contract, is the goal is. Uh, to make sure that we reached a compromise that saved money, that preserved jobs, preserved um, fire equipment, fire stations, and um, made sure that we went to the table with an open mind for negotiations to allow a win-win. And I think that's what we have. There's a three-year contract with a 16.5 increase in pay. Um, fire department employees will receive a 2% raise. Uh, retroactive to July 1st and on January 1st uh, 2014 fire suppression personnel will, re will receive an additional 14.5 percent raise and EMS and other um, fire department personnel will receive an additional 4 percent raise. Longevity raises at 20 and 25 years will be increased to 5 percent from the current 4 percent raise and the contract also outlines a new shift structure for fire suppression personnel. The modified structure begins January 1st and calls for a 12.5% increase in the number of hours worked. There's a lot uh, more, and I, I won't get into to more details, but this uh, represents the uh, result of a lot of hard work, a lot of very tough uh, but um, collaborative uh, negotiation. I'm very glad that we've gotten to this point. So they are here if you want to talk about those things, and I think that is it for all of the items that I wanted to tackle. So the floor, the, the state, unless anybody else wants to say anything before I open the floor up to questions. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, Mayor, the uh, fire unions and your administration were at odds over this contract for an extended period of time. Mm -hmm. Was there a key moment when uh, the deal got done uh, a, I don't know, sit down between key people or, or something like that? I think it was when I sat down with um, President Hoffman's representative that really sealed the deal uh, for me. We were able to make it work. And, and what, was, what was this stuff? I'm joking. That? that was his girlfriend I was talking about. <laughs> she was the peacekeeper that brought us all together. <laughs> but no, I don't, it, it, was, it, it was the commitment to make it happen. Mm -hmm. You know, um, Hoffman, Campbell, every, 
we we wanted to get to a resolution. We couldn't get it done in the first round, uh, so we you know started had, you know because of the deadline had to move toward arbitration. But I believe that commitment to get again get to a win win was still there, and we just made sure that uh, we continued at it. The the secret that the um, overtime issue in the police department is uh, no one's ever seemed to be able to control it. Mm -hmm. do, are you what are you thinking in terms of this kind of arrangement? for the other big um, public safety group, which is Whisper. I think what I, my takeaway from the fire negotiations is that everything is on the, to, you know, to move towards whether it's AFSCME or whether it's the police, is everything should be on the table. And uh, we should be open, everyone should be open to uh, possibilities that we didn't think about when we first sat down at the table. But we can, we can uh, you know, we're, we know where we want to be as far as savings. Uh, and we know where we want to be when it comes to budget. We just have to be open to how we get there and open uh, and collaborative, meaning you know, we'll come up with ideas. Uh, the unions will come up with ideas. We'll, we'll vet them. We'll, you know, we'll continue to you know, massage the process until we get to a win-win. So yes, the goal is to better control overtime spending, uh, to work so we can uh, deal with the attrition and the, the lateral moves, you know, our officers that are getting, um, you know, the, the other jurisdictions are swooning our officers and getting them to, um, you know, move to other jurisdictions uh, for a number of reasons. We're trying to curtail that as well. Uh, so we have those priorities, what we, what we want to see done. They have their priorities. And, and my goal is when we sit down at the table to come up with, in a collaborative way, come up with a, a compromise. Mary, you, you've stated you, you want to shrink city government by 10%. Mm -hmm. um, the fire deal accomplishes that for the number of firefighters mm -hmm. and positions. Well, do you want to see the same thing for the police department, a 10% smaller police department? I, I'm not ready to say uh, what, the, what I'd like to see as far as a number. Uh, police officers yet. I think uh, it would be premature as we are con uh, currently uh, doing the uh, review with the consultants on uh, the right size of the districts, the sectors, all of those things to um, you know, make a judgment about the size of the force at this time. We are understanding about that plan um, that, that is being done by Bratton and company, et cetera, in the police department, really looks at the, the district configuration in the police department hasn't changed since, I don't know, any of us were alive, I think. I wish um, Kern was still here. He knows about it. But it's, it's not so. I wish he was here too, because my the understanding is the council is what stands in the way of this, that nobody wants their. No, 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 no. I wouldn't okay. say that. Several, well, several council members are emphatic that we should be looking at the district lines and the sector lines. I can't say unanimously. But you know, if you look at the map, everybody that represents um, North and Northeast is, um, you know, they're dealing with that. Or for the cameras, it would be this. What, what do you what do you, <laughs> what do you kind of see as the, um, you know, at the end of the day, what the police department's layout should look like? Obviously, you have it in your head. We we have to get updated on this. Am I correct? Yeah. So I know we have to get updated. I don't know what that looks like. Um, but my hope is by engaging professionals that have looked at this issue before, we can get a better sense of uh, what modern day sectors should look like and help us better uh, deploy our officers, number one, to, to be able to handle uh, the public safety concerns in their area in uh, a more efficient manner, but also to get, to get more efficiency for the whole department when it comes to overtime. Fingers crossed. Wow. Mayor, with regards to the fire contract, did you have any concerns about 24 hour shifts and people getting tired at the end of shifts, especially in the busier trucks. Yeah, I think we took a look at all of those things, and yeah, I want to really thank uh, again the the union officials for doing some investigation on their own of where uh, you know talking to departments and personnel departments uh, that have the similar schedule, and they could make their own assessment. So you know we put it on the table. The, the, the shift on the table, and then you know they did their own research to see if it was something that they would think works for their members, and that's how we reached the agreement on it. Um, the current rash of shootings, is there anything, you know, the commissioner last year talked about gang issues, driving, is there anything that you're seeing that's fueling this uh, most recent rash of shootings and sort of continuum? <clears throat> yeah, th there isn't anything other than uh, these individuals are folks that are in the city, uh, to continue their criminal enterprise. Uh, 
while we haven't seen an overlapping or a huge connection between these, the obvious connections is that these aren't um, the average citizens that are working day in and day out, although unfortunately we've seen how uh, that violence will spill over. And that's one of the many reasons why the mayor and the commissioner has made it very clear that we will, we will not tolerate that here. Uh, part of our um, analysis, our strategy is to look at intel uh, and to do an analytical analysis of all the crimes and see if there's any nexus so that we can better deploy and do um, intelligence-led policing. And that's constantly what we're doing. Well, from that intelligence, what are you what are you learning about? You know, is there any patterns or anything, or is it just simply, you know, these sort of random? I think what we can talk about here is that the driving force in the city is gangs and drugs and guns. They all go together, and that's why the mayor and the commissioner has made it very clear that we will continue to focus on gangs and guns uh, who are intent on making the city their business uh, to further their organization, and we're, we won't allow it. Any updates on the you know the the robberies in the Northern District and that, um, you know, the juveniles and the cars and anything like that? You know, it's an ongoing investigation. I was very proud of the hard work and the quick work done by the officers where, if you could think about it, we were even able to identify where some of these stolen phones were throughout throughout this, the, the counties. And uh, a lot of hard work and a lot of community support went to it. And really, that's one of the messages we would like is we're working very hard for the community, but we need their support. So uh, where did the phones Yeah, where did the phones come up? I'm sorry? Where were the phones? Where'd they go? Yeah. Uh, the phones were uh, at places where they, they get quick money for it. Uh, and we're not going to get into too much of that because that's part of the investigation. Yeah, but those folks, those machines are supposed to be monitored, thief proof. Yeah. So what happened? Well, clearly uh, there's some flaws in the machines. And uh, we're working with our elected officials to see what we can do. I think the city has done a good job of keeping those uh, machines out. Uh, but that's part of our investigation. We know that for any good measure out there, any, any system that we have that we believe is foolproof, there's individuals out there thinking night and day how they could overcome those. And I think that's what we're seeing here. So it's a well-intended system that is being used for not such a good intention. Are, these, are the people getting fake ID to use them? Because you have to provide yeah, I, I, I'm not going to get into that because that gets into the specifics of the investigation. What we do know is that uh, those machines provide individuals for quick money with very little oversight. And you're talking about the eco ATMs, is that right? Correct. That's one one of the ways. How did you? What were your initial leads in that case? How did you eventually? Again, that's an ongoing investigation. We won't talk about it. We're very proud of it. We wish we could tell you, but we really are you concerned. Can tell us. Of course, <laughs> we're really we're really concerned with the with the quality and, and, and credibility as we move forward with this investigation. How many of the um, you know, like what, on a percentage basis, <laughs> if you can tell us when you arrest these juveniles that are involved in these kinds of street robberies and non-fatal shootings, etc. How many of them have some kind of gang membership? What percentage? Is it 50%, 60%, most? I don't want to, you know, I, I don't want to put a percentage on that. I don't think that'd be fair. We've not done a study. I could tell you this. The gangs in our community, just like in any other community where I've come from before in my nearly uh, three decades of police policing, if we, the government, the schools, the parents, don't do something to break this vi violence and cycle where the gangs are recruiting our youngsters, they will. That's continuously going on. Uh, on. On behalf of the mayor and the commissioner, we've made it very clear we're not going to arrest our way out of this. We're also looking at how we can break that, that cycle where gener it's generation, where we see individuals that grow up and become uh, start to live that life. So it's multifaceted. It's a big problem in, in a lot of the communities, whether it's in suburban or urban areas, and, and we're working towards that. It's not just a one fundamental where we're going to arrest our way out of it. That doesn't work. Mayor, I'd like to... Uh, do you yeah, well, what are your thoughts about some communities in the city um, hiring private security? So it's not uncommon. You know, we have the communities that put up, um, you know, security cameras and you know, create networks. Uh, we have more that are, are trying to do that to, to supplement what we're able to do with the police department. We also have communities that pay into, um, you know, whether it's the Midtown Dist Benefits District or the uh, Downtown Partnership in waterfront area pay for supplemental uh, security so it's not uncommon um, you know I, I in a perfect world no one would have to do any of this um, but um, we're dealing with the realities uh, that additional technology and additional feet on the street help us in the crime fight and if there are areas uh, that want to do it and want to do it in cooperation and partnership with the police department we'll work with them 
Mary, uh, we're getting closer to the groundbreaking for Harbor Point. Mm -hmm. The plans are, and this is the first time I believe this has ever been done in Baltimore, to drill down into that cap, mm -hmm. which is protecting uh, the, the toxins and poison in the ground. Um, do you have any concerns with this process, this you know, drilling into the cap, which was built to contain mm -hmm. this stuff? My concern is that it, it's done right. And that's why we've been working very closely with uh, Maryland Department of the Environment, and I also know the federal government is involved as well. Yes, this is a delicate operation, uh, but all of those, uh, in order for it to happen, that we had to get pre-approval uh, from the regulatory agencies, and they believe it can be done in a way that is safe. May I explain as well a question about mm -hmm. the violence issue? Um, mm -hmm. Obviously, everything's up. The homicides are up. The non-fatal shootings are up. Mm -hmm. How concerned are you? Just Personally, your mayor, mm -hmm. after years of it, everything going down, now it is really kind of really it flaring up. Um, I mean, do you feel some personal frustration, anger, because it, you're the one, you know, sitting in the second floor of this yeah. building? And, you know, when I when I was able to, when I was mayor at the time, we had the lowest homicide since the '70s. I still was frustrated because we were still a too violent city. So, you know, yes, when we had our, our banner year with respect to a decrease in violence, um, I was proud of the work of the men and women of the, the police department, but I also knew that we could be a safer city. Um, so, yes, it's frustrating uh, for me personally because I still very uh, firmly believe uh, that we can, uh, we can be a, a safer city. And I think we're doing the right things uh, with our deployment, with, use, with using intelligence. I also think uh, that in the ways that we're doing uh, things differently, some of the results will take longer to see uh, because, you know, and I've talked about this before, there are some communities where because of past police practices, uh, the community members uh, detest the violence on the street and are very, uh, they, they condemn the, the individuals that are perpetrating it, but in some communities they hate the police more. Uh, because of past uh, police practices, and I, I firmly believe, you know, while yes, we have to remain vigilant to focus on on violent offenders, we also can't ignore that fact that in some communities where we really, really need um, community support to get uh, information, uh, we have some repair work to do, and that doesn't happen. Uh, overnight. So yes, it's, it is a, a frustration, but I'm no less frustrated than I was when we had the, the year we had the, you know, under my administration when we had the lowest homicide rate since the 70s. We are a much too violent city, and I, and I firmly believe that there, uh, there is a future for Baltimore that is much safer uh, than we have been under my administration and where we are now. We fought very hard uh, to keep Morgan Stanley, and uh, we it was a tough competition. It was um, by 2002 that was down to Baltimore and Pittsburgh, and I'm pretty sure my feelings about Pittsburgh are, are, have been made clear uh, in the past. So I was pleased that we were able to hold on uh, to Morgan Stanley. And I also understand uh, what this means when it comes to uh, jobs in the future uh, for the city. So I support uh, the extension. I support. Uh, you know, the, the work that they're doing, and my hope is as we continue to grow out of this recession, you know, Morgan Stanley will be one of, uh, just another one of the companies that uh, is able to, you know, to, to be resilient after the, uh, the, the Great Recession. Do you think more jobs, more deals, um, subsidies should be structured tied to jobs like this one, whereas jobs are added, um, cer certain loans or grants are then given? Uh, um, rather than doing things all up front and then hoping they work out? I certainly think it's worth taking a look at. I mean, at, at the, the end of the day, we want to reach the goal, which is making sure that more Baltimore City residents have employment opportunities. I think there are a lot of ways to get to that. So, you know, making that, you know, whether it's up front or whether it's something that is, that, um, you know, is put into contingency plans for down the road, um, the goal remains clear and our, our commitment to reaching the goal uh, remain steadfast. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.